Hello friends, this is Rupesh and I'm watching CBP Nets video series on data structure series and this is about an array tree. So you might have seen binary tree where parent can have two nodes at max, but an array tree meaning it can have any number of nodes. So this is the most simple form of tree because if you see tree, this is how it looks like, right? And this portion is called branches and this portion is called root so in our case we just reverse it and in actual tree there are so many branches and you don't know that okay one branch may have several other branches right so there is no number defined in actual tree so if you want to create the similar tree in program it is called an array tree meaning you can have n number of nodes coming out from one branch or one node it's just that simple so you can have any number of nodes coming from root or a node. So then from here you can have only two maybe and here you have only one but here you have several other nodes. So this is possible. So totally undefined nodes coming out of one node. Okay. So this kind of tree is called an array tree. Why an array? Because n is like you replace with whatever number you want to replace with. If you replace with 3 then at max 3 will be there or if you replace with maybe 13 then at max one node can have 13 other branches so stuff like that so as I have said that this is the input so let's create a tree and we'll sum this video by looking at the program how you should loop through all the nodes I mean if you have one node and there are several other nodes coming out of that node meaning you have to iterate over these nodes also right and we'll see that how we'll do that in recursion using for loop. So don't go anywhere. I'll show the program also. So wait a minute. Let's take these inputs from here. So the input meaning this seven is nothing but number of nodes. How many nodes will be there? And this six meaning number of edges. So node is equal to six. So let's create these edges and form a tree. So one to two. So this is actually an, an array tree here and this is very simplest form. I can have a very complex tree. This is perfect an array tree. So now let's look at the program and see how it will work. Hey guys, time for a quick pause and what you are seeing right now is my Patreon page. So if you don't know what is Patreon, it's a crowdfunding website where you can support any content creator like me and in return you get rewards. So. If you join me, I can be your private tutor or you just want to chat with me and ask your doubts or maybe you just want to support me with very small amount and I'll still have something for you. So do visit my Patreon page and see if you like it. And if you want to discontinue anytime, you can do that. So if you have already visited my Patreon page, let's continue our video now. So this is the program and I have already explained how to use vector of vector in order to store tree and graph. So if you don't know what is I'm talking about, please go ahead and watch my video how to store tree and graph in vector of vector. You'll get that video in this playlist. Okay. So the main idea is we'll start from this main here. So first I will take how many nodes are there and how many edges are there. So the input would be seven and six. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So seven nodes and edges if you'll count one, two, three, four, five, six. So six edges. So seven and six would be the input first. So I'll take that into this one. And then depending on the nodes, Incremented by one. Why one? Because this is a vector and it start from zero. So I will take vector of vector and the resize would be n plus one. And how many edges are there? I will take that many edges and I'll keep on pushing into this vector of u and value would be v. Meaning if I'm giving one is connected to two, so it will be like vector of one will be connected to push back vector of zero. So how this thing work, you can go ahead and watch that video. I'm not going to explain that again and again here. And after taking the input from computer, I'll just do the DFS one. So DFS one meaning one is the root here. Can you see this? One was the root. So I'll give root and DFS will actually do the DFS depth first search. This is another way of traversing the tree. So you will come here. Let me execute this program and show you the output. So if I execute this, 
and it is asking me the input so the input is this number so you know what it is so don't get confused like what is this six and seven so seven is number of nodes six is number of edges let me paste that here see one two four five six three seven let me take this number and put it here one two four five six three seven so this is the output and this is the tree so let's see how it will actually give you this output so as I'm just traversing, I'll first come to here and I'm printing one. So that is fine, right? Because we'll reach into this DFS with one here and we're just simply printing that. And then vector of one. So how many nodes are connected to one? It will give you that and you will loop on that list. So the list is two and three. So we inserted two first then three so two will come out first i mean it will be first in the vector okay so that's why it is printing two now because what i'm doing i'm taking that two inside this node you should be knowing how this four loop will work it is advanced for loop in c plus plus so for now you just understand that this will give me the list of something like two and three and i'm iterating over this list so as this is loop so first i will get this two inside this node and then after that I'll get three. So first I'm getting two here and two is then recursively passed to this again the same function. So now this time two is coming. So I'm printing two here. Can you see this? So that's why we printed two. Now as we have reached to two now, so this vector of two. So how many elements are connected to this two here? So I mean how many childs are there for this two? So four, five and six. Now we'll iterate over four, five and six. And don't tell me that I did not go to three because it is recursion. So I did not get the chance to go to three. So it will be coming when you will have backtracking. Okay. So when you will be done with this portion of tree, then only you can go to three. Okay. So now four will be the number. Okay. Node will contain four and then I'll pass four here and we'll print four. So see, we are printing four here. So as four have come this time and now I'm searching how many Childs are there for four. No, there is no child further. Okay. So this for loop will not execute. Meaning I'll go back and that time I called with four. Now this time I'll call with five. So five will come here because I'm calling with five. So we'll print five here. So see, we are printing five and same five is also not having any children because we'll check this here. Okay. So there is no list. So we'll not do again anything and then we'll go back and this time we'll call with six so we are calling six so can you see this whole part is done here so once this this for loop is done we'll go back from that stack and we'll go back from here to here so we came to this whole place because of this two and now three was left for that loop right because we were looping on this array and we found two so recursively we reached to this array now this whole array is done so we'll go back and we'll do rest of the job so rest of the job meaning three so three will come here inside this node and we'll call this with three now so three will be printed so see we are printing three now and as we have printed three here we'll check how many nodes are i mean childs are there for three so there is only one child for three so we'll pass that child here and recursively it will call itself and then it will print itself so see we are printing here seven now and then it will check okay seven have any child no seven don't have any child so that recursion will be completed and it will go back and then it will reach here and then there is no other child here meaning the array is actually complete then we'll go here and if one does not have anything else then we'll go back and then everything is done so this is how you are getting this output so the key is this for loop here you remember in in binary tree this looks something different right we just call dfs with uh, root ka left and some value if you want to pass then dfs roots right you remember we used to do something like this for binary trees because there are only two branches like this and this. So we call this and this, this one left and this one is right. So for every node, there can be only two childs. Okay. That's why we were traversing using left and right technique because there was only two nodes. But here we can see that we can have n number of nodes. So we have to traverse using this for loop and this is how you'll do it.
so it's fun right i know i know thanks for watching guys i'll see you in the next videos bye bye take care